Hello beautiful people and welcome to my channel. Actually, welcome to the very first episode of Amy Marie Art. The aim of my channel isn't to be too serious and to just have fun and create and enjoy the process. So come with me on this journey as I work on the next section of my artwork, which is titled, It's All A Bit Cuckoo, which kind of sums up my channel, to be honest. Let's get into it. Starting off by putting a base layer down using my filbert brush. I rotate the brush from side to side using the flat and the thin side. I find that this gives me a good variation in texture and feather sizing. I know this is just the base coat, but I'm not just putting the paint down in a solid flat color. I'm angling my brush in the direction of the feathers that I can see in my reference photo. I find this really does help with all the other layers to come. It helps to know where the shadows are going to be and where the clumps of feathers will lay. My paint consistency for this stage is watered down just a little bit so that it's still opaque but slides around and leaves a little raised edge at the end of each stroke. As well as the direction of the feathers, I'm also having a look at the different types of feathers. The feathers on the head here are short and rough in texture, and there are a few sticking up here and there. Coming down towards the feet and right underneath the belly, they have the same sort of texture, but are a little bit shorter than those on the head. As we work our way up the belly, I turn the filbert brush so that it is flat because these feathers lay flatter and aren't as rough. As we come up under the wing, I'm laying down the paint quite thinly. I'm not adding too much texture because these feathers are so soft, they're almost like fur. While I continue on with the base layer, I have a little confession to make. I'm not a professional artist. I've never been to art school or had any type of formal training. The techniques that I use to create my paintings, they might not be the way it's taught in school. And they might be, I don't know. All I know is that they work for me and that's okay. As artists, we get to create and we get to experiment and through trial and error, we get to find our style. So whether you're a newbie artist and you're picking up that paintbrush for the very first time or whether you've been creating masterpieces for years, there's always something to learn. That's the beauty of it. Speaking of learning new things, the whole painting and filming at the same time, it's all very new to me and I'm definitely learning as I go. And even though we're only a few minutes into this video, I'm pretty sure you've already picked up on a few little weird things, such as me pointing to random things in the video, but not necessarily talking about it. And I guess that's because when I first started filming, I had all good intentions of talking about the things that I was pointing to. But now I know that it doesn't quite work out that way. And me being me, I am going to go off on a tangent and talk about other things. So lesson learnt, no more pointing in future videos. <laughs> now that my first layer has finished and dried, it's time to move into the second layer. The second layer will have highlights and shadows and colors and tones. And although they won't be as bright as they are now, they will add to the warmth and the depth of the final layer. Another example of learning. Here I am learning, don't block the camera's view from the painting, but thankfully it didn't last too long. 
Hopefully in a few years time, I can come back to this video after I've been doing it for a while. And although I will probably cringe, I can also see any improvements that I have made, things that I have learnt and just how far I've come. I guess that makes it kind of fitting for an art video because the more that we do things, the more that we experiment, the more that we learn and the more that we learn, the better we get. Back to the painting now, you can see I've added in some blue as well as the yellow. The yellow will help those final feathers have a warm glow to them and the blue will tone it down and add a cool tone to it. The grey that you can see me adding now, it's more of a shadow area. So under the wing, it's darker. So there's a heavier amount of grey underneath that wing. There's also some shadow underneath the belly, underneath the compass, underneath the beak and around the eyes. Yes, you did hear correctly. I did say compass. That circle shape on the kookaburra's chest is going to be a compass. And why you might ask? Why not? Yes, you did hear correctly. I did say compass. Yes, that circle shape on my kookaburra is going to be a compass. Why you might ask? Why not? The best thing about creating art is that we can create. We can make anything we want to. We don't have to just paint what we see. We can imagine our own characters and come up with unique ideas, no matter how weird or wacky they may seem. The most important thing is that you like it. And trust me, for years, I struggled with creating things that I thought others would approve of, things that I thought other people would like. So I painted landscapes and old trucks and animals and done things, I guess, normal. But although I had fun doing them, and don't get me wrong, I still enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. And the moment I broke free and decided to create what I wanted to create and let go of that fear about worrying what other people were going to think, that moment, I felt like me. I wasn't hiding away. And the thing is, with art, we're not supposed to hide away. Art is supposed to be a form of expressing ourselves, not hiding away and doing what others want. It's so much easier said than done, I know, but when you have that light bulb moment and you truly let go, it is the best feeling ever. Well, I see I have talked my way through that ugly stage of painting. That's the stage of the painting where you think, oh my goodness, what have I done? And then you keep going and all of a sudden it starts to come together. I have now softened up all of those harsh lines and those harsh colours and now I get to go in with the details. You're going to see me work on the kookaburra's left wing now and then you're going to see me paint over it and paint it again. I do this quite a few times so fair warning. You see, while I do plan out the concept of my artwork and I come up with my characters and work on the composition, I don't really plan out every single brushstroke. So when it comes to painting, I kind of wing it. No pun intended. Okay, maybe just a little bit. <laughs> anyway, what happened is I started adding these highlighted feathers and then I took a step back and realized I didn't like them. So I painted over them and then I added them back in again and then I dulled them down and then I added them in again. It's a bit of a vicious cycle, but you'll see what I mean. I guess that's why it took me as long as it did to start creating videos for YouTube. You see, I know that I do this and I actually used to be Worse, I used to paint over entire sections of paintings, 
but I did realize that was due to poor planning and now I do plan them out a lot better than what I did. But when it comes to that painting process, I do chop and change, but it's mainly because when I take that step back, I see it and I realize that I want to do it differently. And then I had the realization that the very reason that stopped me from creating videos was probably the reason I should create videos. It's important to see that artworks do evolve. We can plan them out as much as we like, but they are going to change. And as much as I vision what I want it to look like, it always looks different. Sure, the characters are the same and the concepts are same, but colors will change textures will change and in the end it's always better than I imagined and that's a good thing to put in a video that's a good thing for people to see push through that point of the artwork where you think you don't like it and you want to turn around because trust me that is the point where the best artworks are made at this stage I have lost count how many times I just went over those highlights but finally, I decided to change my approach. I should have done that right from the start, but for some reason, I was determined to put those highlights in. The approach I'm going with now is to bring the blue over into the brown and the brown over into the blue. And it really was a good decision. It's made it look more natural and added a little bit of realism to it that the highlights just weren't putting in. A bit more blending of these two colors and it really is starting to pop. I'm starting to get to that stage where I'm happy and what do you know, I put those highlights back in. I don't know why I decided that that was a good idea when it didn't work the first few times, but moving on to the beak. And don't worry, if you have a look down, you will see those highlights went and they are staying gone. I'm base coating the kookaburra's beak in a mix of brown and black. It is quite dark with a few highlights. And yeah, I know highlights again, but I promise these ones do work out the second time around. When I first started designing my little kookaburra character, I wanted him to have a slightly larger beak than what they normally do. Kookaburras do have big beaks, but they're not quite as big as the one that I have painted. And I guess that's because when I was little, I always thought their beaks were way too big for their heads. And they probably are, but in my mind, it was like a toucan. It had this ridiculously large beak and I couldn't understand it. So I wanted to portray that in my painting. And I guess that's the beauty of an artistic license. You can do what you want. And if you want to do an extra large beak on a kookaburra, then so be it. Coming in for round two on the highlights of the beak. But trust me, I know it isn't going to be as bad as the wing, I promise. I end up blending the beak while the paints were still wet. I add a little bit of brown. I add a little bit more blue and then I blend the colors together and it really gives a softer effect and I end up being really happy with it. No, really, I end up being happy with it this time. <laughs> Finishing off the final details of this layer on the top beak, I move to the bottom beak, adding in shadows and highlights where needed. And now we've just gone over the halfway point of my very first video, complete with errors and nerves and random rambles, but I have actually had a blast making it. So if you have enjoyed the video as much as I have enjoyed making it, please hit that subscribe button and that like button and share with your friends. Because if you are here at the time that I am posting it, you'll know I've only got a couple of subscribers. 
Shout out to those who are already following me and welcome to those who have just joined. My goal is that I'm going to grow this channel. So if you're here, welcome and congratulations on being one of my first subscribers. I'm now on to one of my favorite things to paint on animals and that's the eyes. I know a lot of people paint the eyes first to get the character and to set the scene, but my weird technique, I like to put the feathers down first, add the eye in and then do my final feathers over the top. It's just the way that I find it easier. But man, I love adding those mixtures of colors adding the pupils and the shadows and that pop of highlight at the end. It's so satisfying and it really does bring the whole kookaburra to life. To get all the variations of color in my kookaburra's eye, I made up a base for the beak. I then added some white on one side and some brown on the other side and that way I had three different colors that all had the same tone. I love how that white shine has really brought the kookaburra to life. I can almost hear him smiling if that's a thing or maybe being a kookaburra I can hear him laughing. Adding those last few details to the beak now that that first layer was dry. Not too many highlights this time, I promise. Coming up after the beak, I'm going to start work on the compass. And unfortunately, my big head got in the way of most of it. <laughs> I got the base coat down, but then when I started doing the details, I moved my head in really close to the canvas and completely forgot about the camera behind me. So you'll see me lay down this white, then do the frame, and then magically the compass has appeared on the face. For the base of the compass, I've used a warm white with a touch of dark brown just to dirty up that white. On the frame of the canvas, I've used yellow oxide. I've added some brown for some shadows, some warm white for some highlights, and a little bit of gold paint for some sparkle. For the compass face itself, I used a combination of black and gray, and there it is. I've dirtied up the background with some yellow oxide, some brown, and then added in some highlights with some white. I'm drawing in the arms of the compass, red on one side and blue on the other. And it's time to paint his tiny little feet and his tiny little claws. They're so cute. To base coat the claws, I've used a mix of gray, blue and black with a touch of brown. To do the shadows on the claws, I've added some more brown and black into that gray mix and that way the tone stays nice and cohesive. For the highlights on the claws, I have used yellow oxide and warm white and done it down the left hand side of each little foot, followed by a watered down pale grey over the top of each little claw just to add that final highlight. And finally, the claw on the feet have been done in a mix of brown and black with a very tiny brush. Mm -hmm. 
And with the claws nearly finished, we are on the home stretch. It's time to finish off the feathers with just a few more highlights using a warm white and a yellow to warm up those feathers and a bright white for the very most highlighted areas. As I'm doing the last few feathers on my kookaburra, I'm making sure to have a few of those clumps of feathers fall over the brim of the compass. That way it looks like the compass is more a part of the kookaburra instead of just sitting on top of him. If you are still here watching and you have made it to the end, I want to say a big thank you. Thank you for watching my video and thank you for your support. It really does mean the world to me. I can't believe I finally did it. I should have done this years ago. And although there has been quite a few headaches and a little bit of frustration behind the scenes, I really have enjoyed it. At this point, I'm aiming to upload a new video every single week. Of course, if there are smaller projects that I'm working on, I may even squeeze an extra one in through the week and go for two videos a week. But I'll just see how all the editing and all the behind the scenes learning curves play out. And I'm sure that the more I post, the quicker I'm going to get at the whole editing process and I may even start adding more videos per week. We'll see how I go. A few more finishing touches to the kookaburra's beak, a few more shadows and a few more highlights and our kookaburra is nearly done. And I have to say, although he's not perfect, I really love him. I'm happy with how he's turned out. And I can't wait to start on all the other characters I have waiting to be painted in this artwork. And he's done. On to some glamour shots. Wow, what a roller coaster of mistakes and nerves that was. But it was fun and I enjoyed it. And I'm sure that in the future videos, my nerves will definitely settle. So thank you once again for joining me and stay creative. Bye.